President Trump survived another assassination attempt today, and while this one wasn't on live TV, the perpetrator certainly wanted to record these events for himself and or others if he was able to actually pull this off. Fortunately, he was not, but I'm going to fill you in on all the details of who this guy was, how he was caught, the things he left at the scene of the crime, and how easy it was for him to gain access to President Trump once again, merely two months after the first assassination attempt that uh, that almost took his life. I mean, just millimeters from actually taking his life. And here we are once again with somebody that was able to get extremely close to President Trump. And I also want to tell you about some of the insanity and rhetoric being thrown around at President Trump after surviving yet another assassination attempt and how this fuels the fire for people that are on the edge a hundred percent. I'm going to show you some of those clips as well. It's unfortunate, but here we go again. I'm going to give you my opinion. Let me know yours, no matter if you agree or disagree. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. Let's go and get into it. So Trump was at his golf course in West Palm Beach, Trump International, and he was in between the fifth and sixth hole. Now, he was golfing with a buddy, Steve Witkoff, and that's when shots rang out. Now, Secret Service, just like they did the first time, within seconds, they were on top of him. They were able to get a some kind of vehicle. There was a specific name for it, and I don't quite remember what the name of the vehicle was. But anyways, they were able to get him in that thing and get him off the golf course, and then, of course, ensure everybody else was okay. Now, fortunately, none of these shots actually came from the would-be assassin, they came from a Secret Service sniper that was uh, one hole ahead of Trump. Now, I don't know if they have people, you know, at the previous hole and at the hole ahead of him. I'm going to actually venture to say they probably don't have them behind him so much after learning some of the details about the security at Trump International, which is just insane. But either way, this guy was able to not just see a, a person, but he was able to see the rifle barrel through the chain link fence. I mean, that is really being on your P's and Q's, man. Uh, you know, when you look at Trump International, there's bushes and vegetation, and it's a beautiful place, obviously, but, you know, from reports, you know, when you get in those bushes at Trump International, it's hard to see anything in there. So the fact that he was able to spot this at all is just a freaking another miracle, to be honest with you. You have a black barrel against light green. That's not going to be necessarily the best uh, uh, coverage or best camouflage, but still, uh, that is fairly impressive considering it's three to 500 yards away from where President Trump actually was. Now, this guy actually left everything at the scene. Uh, Secret Service opened fire. They took four shots at him. And that is when he dipped into his Nissan. It looks like a, an Xterra or Pathfinder, something like that. And that's when he drove off. And fortunately, there was a bystander that took a picture of his vehicle and the license plate and they were able to stop him um, up the road on 95. Now this guy actually had these two backpacks either both of them or one of them was filled with ceramic so he had it up there as kind of like a makeshift barrier. Now ceramic plates are actually a pretty common they're a they're a heavier version um, of any kind of you know body armor or anything like that and they're normally backed with some kind of metal or uh, you know, mixed with other components. So they make them really strong and have the ability to actually stop, you know, a bullet. But either way, this is how he had it set up. And they were zip tied to the chain link fence. And he also had his own GoPro there. So he was going to make sure that he was going to record this event if he was able to pull it off, which is even more sickening. Now let's talk about the guy and the gun used. By the way, I don't think this is an AK, but I'll, uh, tell you what I think it is here in a minute. So the guy, Ryan Ruth, Ryan Routh, whatever, everybody's going to know his name by the end of all of this. And of course, his picture's being blasted everywhere. And really, I found his picture quick on X. And normally, you'll have these situations after these shootings where there's somebody that may have a similar name or the same name, and they'll kind of blast their picture all over the place. But this guy consistently was being called out as the guy. Facebook profile hidden very quickly. Um, just really odd things uh, with the with the profile. I mean, and it was in an instant almost, or that's what it seemed like anyways. So at first glance, just a judgment call. If you were to ask me, hey, 
which one of these 10 guys looks like a uh, potential Trump assassin, I may point this guy out. I don't know. He just has that look about him, just kind of kind of crazy. And it's obvious that he was uh, crazy, allegedly, but, you know, that's what we're going off with right now. Uh, it just has that r really odd look to him. I don't know. It just seems like a consistent pattern. Uh, this guy uh, grew up in North Carolina, and then he moved to Hawaii. But once the Ukrainian war started, that's where it seems like a lot of his focus was. He had a website where he, you could donate money towards that. At one point, I think he was trying to get Iranians to fight for Ukraine, and he ended up in a YouTuber's video talking about the same type of stuff. Um, that was apparently his thing. He donated to Act Blue. Again, that may sound a little familiar. Very kind of extreme actions these people are willing to take and consistency in between them and who they donate to. It's interesting. That's the guy that we're dealing with. Now, he showed up in court today, so we're going to find out more about him once I get some more details about who this guy is. Of course, you know, I will, uh, I will try to share them and shed more light on who he is. But as of right now, we know that he's kind of flip-flop. So at one time, he voted for Trump, and then I guess he didn't like cheaper gas, groceries, utilities. So he decided to go with Bernie Sanders, 2020. And then I guess he switched to... Biden at some point and you know he would make these wild tweets towards President Biden and Kamala Harris and he'd be like hey you guys should go visit the families of Cory Comparatore and the uh, two others that were injured because Trump would never do such a thing of course they'll never show the good side of you know what Trump actually does for people but regardless uh, he said Trump would never do such a thing and y'all should show people what humanity is really like and then he would leave a cell phone number at the end which is interesting because it's like dude do you think Biden's gonna call you and say oh my god you know what uh, Ryan I never thought of that that's such a great idea thank you so much for leaving your cell phone it's it's really weird so kind of back and forth between who he supported but we know that he donated to act blue and voted in the North Carolina primary uh, just earlier this year. So uh, I had read that he had over like 500 tweets, which I guess in the big scheme of things is not really a lot, by the way. I'm on X too, if you want to follow more of what I do. It's a shameless plug right there. But that's uh, that's kind of the guy we're dealing with. That's what we know about him so far. The gun use, people say AK style, and I guess that's pretty accurate, uh, actually, because this to me looks like an SKS with some kind of modern... Uh, Tapco or, or some kind of tactical uh, furniture on the SKS. The SKS was the predecessor to the AK. It was developed during the end of World War II, um, and that intermediate cartridge carried over to the AK, which of course uh, took was predominantly uh, what they used after 1947, and it's been evolved over time. But this looks like an SKS with one of those conversion kits on it. Now it has that uh, banana-style magazine, that curved magazine. That's not just for appearance, right? That's for the actual function of the gun, so that is important there. Uh, but again, just looking at the fact there's no pistol grip, and I can't really tell towards the front of it if it has like a, a traditional like SKS style uh, muzzle. I used to have one up here on the wall, but I uh, put it back in the safe, I guess. So anyways, it has like kind of the gas tube that looks similar to an AK. But um, again, I, I think it's an SKS, but we'll have once we actually know the gun again, we'll analyze more of that. And unfortunately, everybody has a high definition camera in their pockets being their cell phones and we never get a high definition picture of the gun and the things that are there we always get it like it's shot on a freaking motorola razor from 2005 or something you know which i had one of those phones it was a great phone for the time but i don't understand it we can never get a high definition image of this stuff ever so yeah, yeah there's that now three to five hundred yards for a gun like this is something you could definitely do right it, with enough training Typically for more precision shots at longer distances, right? I, I hear some of these people talking about three to 500 yards like it's nothing. Now, I've shot at these distances quite a bit and it is something with regular practice you can absolutely get consistent with. But for precision shots at that distance, typically you'd go for something like an AR, right? Or even a bolt action rifle, which would be even better. Now, I don't know if this guy wasn't, maybe not anticipating this shot, to be as long 
as, as it was, but again, it's double the distance of what we saw in Butler, right? 150 yards is a very easy shot for somebody that spent just very little time behind a gun. Once you get out to 300 or 400, 500, you know, you, wind and humidity, atmosphere, all of that stuff really starts to uh, take control or not take control, but it really becomes a bigger factor um, in how it affects the round. Either way, too close to who could be our next president in less than two months. That is way too close. One thing that does surprise me though, and I, I just can't believe him, I really honestly can't even believe they came out and said this, but uh, apparently because Trump is not a sitting president, he was not afforded the same secret service type of security as if he was a sitting president. Well, you gotta understand the golf course is surrounded by shrubbery. So, so when somebody gets into the shrubbery, they're pretty much out of sight, all right? And at this level that he is at right now, he's not the sitting president. If he was, we would have had this higher golf course around it. But because he's not, the security is limited to the areas that the secret service deems possible. Now you may say, well, yeah, that makes total sense. Well, no, it does not because he is the potential president in what, 50 days. Also, there's already been an attempt on his life. There have been congressional hearings about this and, you know, uh, acting director Ronald Rowe and the lack of the trust in the Secret Service. I've covered several Secret Service mishaps since then. And now you're telling me that, you know, if he was the sitting president, the entire course would have been covered. But because he's not, it wasn't. Now, again, if this is like a George W. Bush, okay, I get it. If it's a Jimmy Carter, I get it. I covered their budget. I covered exactly, you know, kind of the money they spend and what that goes towards. And right, this is not a money issue. This is a resource issue. This is a do I give a issue, to be quite honest with you. And it's quite obvious to me that they don't. And I heard reports, oh, well, you know, it's such a hard place to cover. Well, you know what? If you have enough agents and enough eyes there, enough eyeballs on each one of the vulnerabilities, this is something that these people can do. I never question the people on the ground except for, well, very few of them, right? Uh, and come to find out it was Department of Homeland Security and Butler. Regardless, I never questioned the people that covered Trump up right away or the counter sniper that took the shot that took him out, right? These are people that are really, really good, really well trained. So you're telling me that if you don't have more of them, they can't protect a president wherever he is or even a former president, but one that has been obviously the target of assassination attempt just two months prior to this? I don't believe that crap for a minute. I think this comes down to them actually caring enough to give him the resources that he needs. And I'll be honest with you, uh, I, I, I don't know if he could just go ahead and do this, but I would if I was in his position and I had the the, the ability to do that, which I think he does. Um, I know he does, right? It's just hire your own security at this point. Hire the best counter snipers, the best snipers. Hire people that you know will do the job for you because it's obvious that this administration is not willing to give President Trump what he needs. And I understand that he can laugh these things off and make a joke about it, but you're talking about ripping this country in two. I mean, <sighs> I don't want to sit here and go off and talk about what would happen because I hope to God it never does. These people talk about January 6th like it was, I mean, Pearl Harbor. They, I think they even compared it to probably Pearl Harbor at some point. You have no clue what you're messing around with. The love that people have for President Trump, including myself, I've already made that very clear over the past two months. Um, it is insane. You know, I've never said that I love a president, but we really believe in what he stands for. So this is not something anybody wants. I certainly don't want that. I do not want to see this happen. And you don't want to see what happens in this country if he were to be taken out. And it's just unbelievable that his security has not been ramped up to the max like he is the president because he could potentially be the president in, like I said, what, two months now, less than two months, that to me is insane. And then you have this crazy rhetoric from people talking about, oh, you know, no ears were hurt today going about your Sunday. And MAGA extremists. No, we just believe in this guy and we've already seen what he did for us. And again, were you better off then or now? I can tell you 
I was better off, way better off than when Trump was in office, right? So I know what he's going to do. The first time it, it was a gamble, right? You didn't know what he would do. Now we know. And so um, that, that's why you see the massive amount of support. It's not extreme, but what is extreme is saying stuff like this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't hearing pew pew fire in the red state of Florida as common as hearing birds sing? I'm sure it wasn't personal. Please don't flatter yourself. Parent assassination attempt comes amid increasingly fierce rhetoric on the campaign trail itself. Mr. Trump, his running mate J.D. Vance, continue to make baseless claims about Haitian immigrants in Ohio. And that leads to people that are on the edge that do stuff just like what you see here. It just, it all makes sense, right? They are very extreme and can be violent. We've seen that in the past. There needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there's unrest in our lives. And unfortunately, there's plenty to go around. And everyone beware, because they're not gonna stop. It is gonna, they're not gonna stop before election day in November, and they're not gonna stop after election day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not gonna let up and they should not. And then on top of that, you have 30 police officers who were injured on the first night of the riots, one run, run over by a car, a chance to stuff police officers in trunks, a, a vehicle with explosive devices. Uh, let me be crystal clear why this is happening. It's because Democrats have enabled the mob. You know, if people don't look this up and realize that, you know, the reason he went to North Korea, right? And why he talked to Putin the way he did, or even talked about him the way he did, but he kept us out of wars, right? And what he imposed on China to make sure they don't become a further threat to the United States. If, if you don't look up what he said in Charlottesville in full context, people are like, oh my God, this guy really is extreme. You know, and if you have somebody on the edge, like, the suspected or alleged guy that we're talking about now, you're gonna get events like this all the time. And that, that just happened last week, right? Just a week ago, they are continuing. So they may have toned down in volume, but not in rhetoric. It is still the exact same as before the first assassination attempt. It is well known that he admires dictators. Attacking the policies, and even some of the corruption and stuff that some of these politicians are involved in, hey, that's part of the game. But attacking the character and talking about fascists and, you know, loving dictators and stuff, that's on a whole nother level. And that's exactly what I'm talking about here. And never, never forget the things they've said in the past. A so-called anti-fascist website is encouraging, quote, all manner of physical violence against Trump supporters. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. Do you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station? You get out and you create a crowd, and you push back on them, and you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. If this country doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn down this system and replace it. Look, he's a billionaire. Trump is a billionaire. He could have went off after the, you know, 2020 and said, you know what? I did what I needed to do. I'm gone. I'm done. I did it all. I'm going to go golf the rest of my days. No assassination attempts, probably no trials, no prosecutions, no mug shots, none of that. He could have just went on and lived the rest of his life. But because he's going through all of this hell and dragging his name through the mud, and again, another assassination attempt, that's why you have so much belief and strong trust and honestly love for President Trump. And I don't know if it just kind of hits some of these people in the, in the core, down to their bone, knowing that they don't really have anything to stand on because there's no policies. And Kamala's kind of adopting some of Trump's policies. I mean, she's flip-flopping like a bass on the bank, you know? I mean, it's just really uh, awful. So maybe it just kind of hurts their pride a little bit, seeing that we are so adamant and supportive of Trump and uh, actually have some policies to back it up. But this rhetoric, man, it, it is, I believe, 100% um, the reason of what you see. And it's happening right in front of us, and people just uh, continue to allow it to, uh, to happen and listen to this crap in the legacy media. So there you go. That's what we know so far. That's my opinion. And I'd love to hear yours. No matter if you agree or disagree, let me know what you think down below. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.